Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Astrolo Gal and today I am back with another video. Today's video is going to be all about the Midhaven and I'm going to break this video up into two parts. So this is going to be part one and I'll be going through Aries to Virgo and part two is going to be Libra through Pisces. So the Midhaven is the entrance to the 10th house and relates to your career, reputation, and social standing. The Midhaven, also seen as MC, which stands for medium coli, Latin for middle of the sky, and it marks the zodiac sign that was directly overhead, or Midhaven, at the exact moment that you were born. And unlike our moon sign that creates habits formed in childhood and past lives, the MC takes time to really formulate and to bloom and to build. And this is going to be the area in our chart that is most associated with success achievement and recognition and is considered to be one of the four most important angles of your chart. The kind of success that gives us personal fulfillment, whether that be through money, stability, family, love, or fame. Being linked to Saturn, Capricorn, and the 10th house, the MC speaks of our relationship with authority and hierarchy. The MC also shows us the directions our lives take when we step out into society and is the area of our chart most reflective to self-actualization in the outside world. Midhaven is also going to be a good indication of how you come across online and your social media presence. It's going to be what you create with the intention of it having a lasting impact for the world to see. And this is going to be your best pathway to social recognition and what you stand for in this world. So ideally, the MC should not be looked at in isolation. To have a better understanding of your placement, you must consider the entire chart. We cannot look at the MC without looking at the IC, and it's important to look at the planetary rulers of your Midhaven and to see what house that falls in, as that will give a stronger indication of where you can really make your mark in this world. And it really shows where your unique talent lies. If you feel like you haven't really found that job or career that really lights your soul on fire, Saturn return will really encourage you more on that path. So when you look at your Midhaven, which is going to be at the top of your chart, it's gonna be just as important to look at the IC, which is gonna be the lowest part of your chart. And you can look at this axis as a tree and you can look at the IC as the roots and the foundation of yourself, and you can look at the branches and the outward movement as what you grow into in this lifetime and what you take from your childhood and what really encourages you to really sprout up into the world. So conversely, the IC speaks of inward focused energy, the personality of our roots, our foundation, our home life, our family roots, our ancestors, heritage, childhood, deep subconscious hidden motivations to succeed in the outer world. And this can also include secret fears that may unconsciously steer your direction in the outside world. Your IC is going to be more of what people don't see unless you choose to share with them. So if you ever feel like you lose your sense of purpose in your outer world, you can always retreat to your IC to your roots, to nourish yourself, and to recollect which path is best for you. All right, so like I said, this is gonna be a two-part series Midhaven video, and this one is going to be Aries through Virgo. So we're gonna start with Aries. All right, so Aries, you guys are the pioneers of Midhavens. You guys really excel in the workplace because you guys really know how to get what you want. You guys are hard workers, ambitious, loyal, dedicated, and I find this to be a really great place to have your Midhaven because I find there to be a lot of success for Aries Midhaven people. So as always, before we start with your Midhaven, I think it's more important that we take a look at your IC in your home life to kind of see what may have unconsciously or consciously grown us into our Aries Midhaven. Libra IC as children really seek balance and harmony in their home life 
and oftentimes, sadly, they don't really receive that. You may have had parents that didn't really put you on a pedestal or give you as much attention as you were seeking. Maybe you had a sibling that received more attention or acted out in ways demanding that attention. Therefore, there may have not been the attention that you were seeking because there wasn't really any left for you. So childhood for a Libra IC may teach you that if you want something, you have to go out and get it. You have to go out and work for it. You have to put the effort in. And when things are bad in the Libra IC's home life, their entire life feels unbalanced. Sometimes one parent has to take the weight of being both parents because one parent doesn't really hold the weight to keep things balanced in the home life. So typically with this IC, it's that you have parents that deeply love you, but it's that they may not have shown you in the way that you deeply hoped for. Therefore, you may work really hard to impress them by either building your intelligence or excelling in school um, through creative or artistic talents or by exceedingly good behavior. You may find friends or others outside of your home life to feel more like family than your actual family. And if you didn't find peace in the home in early life, that's going to be extremely important for you later in life that you create that for your family. Um, eventually, you grow really tired of patiently waiting to discover that validation and love that you seek from your home life. And eventually you shoot up into your Aries midhaven and really put yourself out in the world. And so you go out into the world independently and confidently, ready to take things on as the ram. Aries is the ram. So you really take on that mentality going out into the world. And you actually really surprise people when you shoot up into your midhaven. And once Aries MC realizes the potential of their midhaven, they are just on a mission to really take on the world of possibilities. When Aries MC people are out interacting with the world, they are very confrontational, they're very competitive, and they have a very strong approach toward their career and their goals. Online, you guys are more of the type to observe and to interact. I feel like this is the sign that will like scroll, 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 but not really post very much especially if you have a Cancer Ascendant. It is possible that people assume you may be quiet or shy, um, but when it's your turn to present or be in the spotlight, you really wow others with your presentation and the way you carry yourself. This is going to be a Midhaven that's confident in the workplace, even if you don't feel you come across that way because Aries has that natural fire, it has that natural spark. Not necessarily like a Leo or Sagittarius. Um, you know, Leo is really seeking that attention. More so for an Aries, it's you're seeking to be the leader. You're seeking to, to make it to the top. You're seeking to, you know, take initiative and to really feel a sense of praise for what you accomplish, but not necessarily just walk into a room and be like, I'm here, praise me. It's like, look how hard I work and follow my lead, you know? In career, you guys are goal getters. You guys really seek excitement, challenge, and action, a lot of stimulation. You guys have a wits about getting somebody to like you and then getting them to do what you want them to do. Aries doesn't really like being told what to do in the workplace. They prefer to have full control. So I would say try to avoid being micromanaged if you can. And I feel that Aries really prefers being in positions of authority. Aries highly prefer to be in leadership roles or roles where they have a lot of flexibility and freedom. I find Aries Midhavens to get really ticked off if people are lazy, if their co-workers are lazy because they are not lazy at work and so they really notice if other people are slacking. Aries being the ram and really jumping into things can be a sign that will start something really confidently and have intentions of finishing things may not always finish them or may get distracted by something new they want to jump head into. And for that reason, Aries Midhaven people tend to go from job to job frequently 
until they really find that thing that really lights them on fire, like I was saying earlier. And then they'll give like 110% toward that thing and they'll probably reach a really high position in the workplace. And if there are any competitions in the workplace of trying to reach a goal, Aries Midhaven people really love that kind of thing because they already know they're going to win. Like they are the ones that are really geared for reaching goals. And also Aries Midhaven is going to be the sign that brings a lot of lightheartedness or joy into the workplace. The only other thing I recommend you do, Aries, is to take a look to see where your Mars lies in your birth chart and what house your Mars lies in as that may give greater or deeper insight to special talents or unique gifts that you can really cultivate when it comes to career or success. Alright Aries, that is all I have for you guys for your Midhaven video. I hope that this resonates with you all. And if you are interested in doing some one-on-one -on -one work with me, I will have my website below where you can book a one-on-one -on -one reading. Hi Taurus Midhavens, this is your video. As always, we start with the IC to get a better understanding of what motivates you out into the world as a Taurus Midhaven. And so your IC falls in Scorpio. So we're going to start with our IC and we're going to kind of dive a little bit into the roots of your childhood, your home. And to be completely honest with you, I find... Scorpio Ices to be one of the more challenging or more deeply complex midhavens as this placement does usually suggest a tougher childhood. May have had a controlling parent in the home environment with extreme emotions, maybe abuse, violence, or traumatic experiences. You may have experienced abandonment in extreme cases, adoption, or even boarding school, which may go on to be a blessing as to not deal with the challenges of your immediate home life. Usually there is a lot of secrets within the family and a lot of no-no things that we just don't talk about or share with the outside world. Even studying people with Scorpio Midhaven, some will share with you their upbringing as a child, but a lot will kind of just leave it at it's been a rough childhood. And you may experience growing up with one parent, maybe financial issues, possibly escapism from one of the parent figures through drugs or through alcohol, possible psychological issues from people in your family, possibly with this placement, a parent that is extremely involved in um, religion or um, their spiritual beliefs. Um, I find Scorpio IC to be a placement that a lot of times experiences a divorce in the family or you just unfortunately witness your parents go through really ugly disagreements or conversation. So this IC in particular is going to be one that you may experience really traumatic events as a child. Naturally you guys may see the darker side of life as a child and are more aware of the reality that surrounds you than the children around you. You guys are very sensitive to your environment and you guys are really intuitive children. Like you guys had a really keen sense of awareness of what was happening around you. As children, you guys really knew people's intentions. Like as a child, somebody could be talking to a parent of yours and you would have a really good understanding of what their intentions were with your parent in the conversation. I find some of these people to be some of the most resilient and wise people as they persevere and overcome some intense lessons as children. There may be resentment within family relationships or toward family members and so I highly advise forgiveness here as this is a huge gateway toward healing not only others but ultimately yourself. So naturally because you guys may have experienced such an erratic or chaotic childhood, you guys may grow up really desiring and craving stability that you may have felt you didn't have in your childhood. And this may show up in the way that you approach career and your work ethic because you may believe these things bring you a sense of safety and stability. So naturally you guys shoot up into your Taurus Midhaven. You guys are extremely consistent, extremely reliable, 
and really determined in the workplace. These are going to be your people who show up on time, ready to work, ready to accomplish the goals for the day. These are going to be the people that really are more logical in the workplace and really like to see results of the work that they're doing. And they really kind of like to know that everybody around them is also contributing. Like the Taurus or Capricorn Midhaven, these people do really well as CEOs and bosses and do better with a more authoritative position because they are so grounded in their work. They take things really seriously at work and they can be a bit stubborn. They really like routine in the workplace. So if something feels like it goes off routine for them, it can be a little bit stressful. These are going to be your people that may appreciate things to be a bit more traditional in the workspace. And these are going to be your people that may stick around in a job a little bit overdue just to feel financially secure. No amount of failure will distract you from working to achieve your greatest desires and goals in life. They like to see proof of their work paying off. They like to see statistics and facts and numbers and they like to have a logical sense of things operating smoothly. You guys really like to have a sense of direction in your career and because Venus rules your midhaven, you guys could be predisposed to natural beauty and artistic expression. You may greatly seek power because as a child you may have experienced such grand power struggles with authority figures in your life. There is something really genuine about Taurus midhavens and you guys are usually really well respected in the workplace. I feel like this is a really powerful Midhaven to write autobiographies because they've experienced such immense chaos in their childhood and I think that it's it's very healing not only for themselves to really share their story even when it feels like it should be this secret that they shouldn't be sharing but I think that it can be really inspiring also for others that may be going through or went through or have been through the same thing and struggle to find peace, balance, and forgiveness in their own upbringing. Some jobs that work well for Taurus Midhavens, anything artistic, singing, fashion, banking, um, anything sensual. I find that these people tend to be really consistent in how they show up in the world and how they come across on social media. They're very steady, consistent, and reliable in the sense of who they are and who they present themselves as. It's also really important here for you guys to look at the planetary ruler of Taurus, which is going to be Venus, and to see what house that planet falls in, as that may be a greater insight toward your natural and artistic abilities and talents that you can utilize in the workplace. Alright Taurus, Midhavens, that is all I have for you guys for this video. I hope that this resonated with you. and. All right, you guys, take care. I think a lot of it has to do with imagination and the great desire and need to get out of that small town kind of feeling and go somewhere and be somebody because you feel like you're missing something. Hello, Gemini Midhaven. This is going to be your reading. Your IC falls in the sign of Sagittarius. So this would mean that your home life and your roots are really developed through the Sagittarian energy. You guys are the natural communicators of the zodiac. You guys really have a beautiful way of taking ideas and forming them into something more expanded and more developed. So Sagittarius I see as children, I find these children to be the dreamers of the zodiac. They really want to be anywhere but where they are as children. They have this really huge desire to get out and see the world. They may feel like their home isn't really their home and they may have these really deep feelings of homesickness. Um, they might feel alienation as a child even if their home life is considered healthy or stable. They almost feel like they're from a different planet, sometimes feeling like their family isn't really their family. And they almost have like this sense of knowing or this deep embedded subconscious fear that they're missing out on living somewhere that feels more like home. Like they feel like they're not where they want to be as a child. 
and there may be some feelings of restriction as they don't always feel comfortable in their skin, feeling like they don't belong. Sometimes you can find this Sagittarius IC as being one of many children or kind of being like the middle child and that's not always the case but um, kind of feeling like you just don't really fit in with your siblings or your family or you know that there's something greater out in the world that's waiting for you to show up. I find Sagittarius IC children to be extraordinarily intelligent from a very young age. They're very fast learners. They may have this deep sense of loneliness as a child or have a difficult time expressing their complex ideologies and understandings of the world. I do find that this is an IC where adoption may be prevalent and if not, sometimes you even feel like you're adopted even if you weren't. These are going to be your free-spirited children, um, usually escape through really vivid imagination. And, and I know I've kind of already said this earlier in the video, but these children usually feel like the black sheep in their family and their ways of thinking and perceptions on the world and how they view their self and humanity just feels a bit woo-woo or out there. You may have grown up in a highly philosophical household of musicians or actors or teachers even. You are thought of to be a really bright child, highly energetic and adventurous, enthusiastic about learning and always curious about the outside world. You guys sought out to learn and understand different cultures and different perspectives. Your teachers and classmates may have labeled you as the smart child and you guys may have been placed in advanced learning classes. It's possible for the Sagittarian IC to feel a bit restricted in the way they express themselves and expressing what they truly feel at their core and their inability to fully express themselves as children typically is a catalyst of shooting up into the Gemini Midhaven, really finding your sense of voice and expression in this world. So as you guys shoot up into your Gemini Midhaven, you guys become a lot more confident in sharing your ideologies and your complex understandings of the world. You guys have very inventive and imaginative ways of presenting information to the world and I think that you guys have a really special gift of helping society to really see things from new perspectives once you shoot into your Gemini Midhaven and you choose to share these things with the world this is where you guys find your success and your recognition in the world as a Gemini Midhaven you guys possess really great communication skills and you like to share your opinions on a wide range of topics and philosophies that are thought-provoking. Right, so when it comes to career, Gemini Midhaven can really bore easily at work. So a job that is unpredictable and exciting, quick pace is good for you. You may find that you get bored easily at work and so I find many Gemini Midhavens to have multiple jobs and they are really great multitaskers. These people are extremely open and curious and very versatile in their workplace. These people really know a little bit about a lot. I find that Gemini MC are really comfortable with approaching strangers and having conversations about really anything. And while this may have been painful for you as a child, I feel that Gemini Midhavens really grow into the idea of approaching strangers and having conversations that they may have not had as a child. I also find that Gemini Midhaven people tend to prefer careers that involve analytical thinking or mental complexities. A job where you can work with many different kind of people from all different walks of life is very stimulating for you. I find that Gemini Midhaven people do well in jobs where they have quick interactions with people and also self-expression is really important to these people. That doesn't always mean talking but expressing yourself either through art, music, or professional networking. I find that these people really excel when it comes to social networking and blogging and writing and scripting and editing and do really well in the advertisement industry. 
Um, these people make great journalists and public speakers. These are the kind of people that because of their Sagittarius IC feeling like they just wanted to get out into the world, once they reach the age where they are able to, you know, go out into the world, whether that be college or whatever, they sometimes move as far away as possible from their family just because they know that's something that they've wanted for so long is to get out and explore and to really see the world for themselves as the independent child they always were. With this Midhaven as well, online these are the people that you see that had edited their their post because I find, especially with a Virgo rising, because I feel that these people can be highly perfectionist and um, they want everything to come across very like put together. And it's really no surprise to me that Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg are the inventors of Apple and Facebook, two huge communicative platforms that we use. Gemini Midhavens are really good at breaking something really complex down in a way that everybody's able to digest. Alright guys, that is all I have for you for your Gemini Midhaven. I hope that it resonated with you and if you guys are interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, I do offer birth chart analysis and I'll have my website linked below so you guys can find me on there. Hi Cancer Midhaven, this is going to be your reading. And as always, I do like to start by looking at the IC because by taking a look at your roots and the foundation of who you are, we'll have a better understanding of why you may have had urges to grow into the Cancer Midhaven. All right, so looking at your Capricornian IC, I find this to be a bit similar to the Aquarius IC. I do consider this to be one of the more challenging ICs to have because I do find with this placement you may have found a bit of restriction in your childhood. You may have experienced really strict or authoritative parents that usually decided what you were going to do and how you were going to be and how you were going to act as a child. And this can really manifest as a lot of stress as a child to really meet up to those expectations and later down the road this can really manifest as resentment as you probably grow really sick and tired of living somebody else's life. Usually one parent has a really really strong work ethic they can almost be borderline workaholic and they can be extremely critical or judgmental while one of your parents may have been a little less involved or absent from your childhood and I feel like it's one of those things with your parents as a Capricorn I see that you know intuitively that you know intuitively that they love you but it's almost like they are somewhat guarded or cold to expressing their emotions or their nurture toward you and I find that the way that this parent shows their love or their care for you is through providing for you or through acts of service. But as a Capricorn I see, your parent may feel cold or detached. And I find that this is a harder placement to express your feelings as a child because you may have felt that they were misunderstood or completely dismissed, which can be very upsetting as a child, especially if you're more emotionally inclined and have a lot of water placements in your chart. I find that a lot of Capricorn IC children grow up having really strong work ethics because this has been instilled into them from a very young age and typically they, they view hard work as um, being accepted or validated because they're so used to feeling that way from a parent in early life, possibly grew up around older relatives or even felt really close with a grandparent or viewed them as a parental figure. I find the Capricorn I see to maybe feel robbed of their childhood as they may have felt forced to grow up really quickly. The way that they survived was through, you know, hard work and this may manifest for them as not having many friends as children. They may have felt really lonely actually. This is a placement that deeply seeks emotional connection because they may have found it hard to get in childhood. And I find that often these people experience a self-love journey later in life 
realizing that they have been capable of giving themselves the love and nurture they've been seeking most of their childhood. And because of some of these childhood traumas you may have experienced with Capricorn on the IC, whether that be mentally or emotionally or physically, um, that may have deeply embedded fear of rejection within you. And because of this, Cancer I see, or Capricorn I see, really strive to accept love and show deep compassion to those around them because they truly understand the pain of feeling in inadequate and underloved. Capricorn I see really seeks to find this love in the outside world. So when Capricorn I see really shoots up the tree and branches out into its Cancer Midhaven. Um, really the whole world is their family and unconditional love and affection toward all beings becomes a main focus in their life and I also find this to be the person that a stranger could break down crying to because they can feel the warmth and the genuinity of you being there to help and you being a natural caregiver and a natural light worker Oftentimes, Cancer Midhaven people are strongly influenced by their emotions in regards to career path. And like the ever-changing Cancerian emotions, the Midhaven may come with changing career paths if something doesn't feel right anymore. These people are really sensitive to their environment, they're extremely intuitive, and oftentimes they can be overly empathic in their work environment and so if something feels a little bit off to them, they may feel overwhelmed in that environment and they may want to be in an environment that is more soothing or more nurturing or more comforting. I find that these people actually do really well working from home and if the energies surrounding their workplace are off, the Cancerian Midhaven will not be able to give their best work and they really excel in intuitive jobs and careers. You guys make really great nurses, you guys make really great teachers, and um, stay-at-home parents, and caregivers, life coaches. You have to be mindful that other people don't take advantage of your kind heart. And it's important for Cancer Midhavens to practice strong boundaries from those that you know drain your energy. I find out of all of the social media presences of the Midhavens, Cancer tends to post the least. I think that's due to a little bit of, you know, that, that fear of rejection or just kind of having a more private internal world. I find Cancer Midhaven individuals to be a bit introverted and I find that they can be a bit secretive with you know their personal life but these are the kind of people that you just feel warmness from they're very emotionally responsive people and they really do have like this mothering nurturing energy to them um, even if they don't necessarily express that it's just kind of this energy that Cancerian Midhaven people give off and I find that the Cancerian Midhaven person goes out of their way to make a very um, mindful effort to to make sure that their home is more Cancerian than the home they grew up in. I find that these people make really amazing parents and um, genuinely care about people. Like these people have really beautiful hearts and really know how to hold space for other people and what they're going through because they really understand the emotional nature of others and they're extremely intuitive and I think that these people give really great advice. And another thing that's important to look into when looking at the Midhaven is looking at the planetary ruler of your Midhaven. In this case, it's going to be the moon. And looking to see which house the moon falls in as this can give deeper insight to your unique um, gifts and um, abilities in helping you excel and succeed in career. Alright Cancer Midhaven, that's all I have for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it resonated with you. If you are interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, I do offer birth chart analysis and I'll leave my website below if you guys are interested in working with me. Alright guys, so next up is the Leo Midhaven and 
I think this is probably one of the most fun midhavens to talk about because I find this to be a really natural placement for your midhaven to fall. Leos really don't mind being in the spotlight and when we're talking about you know the public persona and fame and success I just find that this is a really radiant position to have your midhaven. So as always we'll first talk about the IC a little bit. You know those are the roots and the foundation of your childhood and your home life and gives really good insight to what may have um, influenced your blooming into the Leo midhaven. So when we look at the axis of the MC and the IC your IC falls in Aquarius, which is in opposition to your Leo. And I find the IC Aquarius to be a bit similar to Capricorn. Um, growing up with an IC Aquarius, I find these individuals to sometimes be painfully shy, introverted and independent as children. They're very understanding and very open-minded because they know what it's like to be different. Um, they are keenly aware of their environment. I see Aquarius children tend to be brilliant and they really observe their environment and they're always analyzing what's going on around them. Their home life may have been a bit cold and detached. Um, I find with the IC in Aquarius that your parents may have been extremely intelligent, maybe scientific even, or into astrology and astronomy. I just picture like Albert Einstein when I think of IC Aquarius parent. It's that level of intelligence that may have come off a bit cold or a bit, um, you know, detached emotionally in the home life. It's not to say that they didn't love you or they didn't care about you. It's just that they weren't really good at expressing their emotions and they weren't the best at nurturing you, maybe. I find that children with an Aquarius IC oftentimes feel a bit strange compared to the children around them. Um, they start to realize at a young age that their family life is not like the children around them and that um, that may feel a little bit isolating or a little bit lonely for the Aquarius IC once they realize that, you know, things about their family are, you know, not normal or it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Sagittarius IC in the sense where you kind of feel that you don't really belong and you may have had very humanitarian parents that were involved in charitable groups and you may have experienced a very unpredictable or unstable childhood. Aquarius ICs are a bit harder to pin down because of the unpredictability that unfold for them. As a child you may find yourself moving quite often, um, kind of feeling that sense of a nomadic life. You may have been highly influenced by parental direction or projected beliefs of your parents. And I do find this being an IC where you may try to seek attention from your parents and that may manifest as being unique or being rebellious and kind of doing things outside of the mundane. And as an outsider, it may seem as though you have an unconventional family life. Um, you may have a non-traditional family or an eccentric family. You may kind of feel like the black sheep or the oddball and feel like you are restricted from expressing your true self. It may have felt that at times your family was not always there for you. And because of that, you were always trying to find your place in this world. Like you were always trying to find not only a sense of belonging, but you were always trying to figure out who you were through these people in your home that didn't really give you the stability you may have been seeking. As they grow older, they begin to grow more confidence in expressing their uniqueness and expressing their, you know, their ideologies and all of this that they witnessed in their childhood and really bringing it to the forefront and really expressing it in a really creative way that inspires the outside world and this is really when the Aquarius IC really shoots up and grows into the Leo Midhaven and this is the fun part because I know the IC can sound a bit depressive but I just want to give a really clear understanding of what it is that you may have experienced in childhood that really has a huge effect and a huge impact on 
how you want to show up in the world and you know how you evolve into something so polarized of your childhood it's like really what can catalyst you forward on your journey of self-expression out into the world so when the sun is sitting in the house of the public persona and career the Leo Midhaven is likely to really shine in these areas. Leo Midhaven are natural leaders and make really great CEOs. The placement will give you this natural incline toward popularity. Leo Midhaven individuals come off really confident and comfortable in the spotlight even if you don't feel like it. You really radiate this regal aura that just gravitates people toward you. There's a natural spark to you. And you guys are really charming people and you guys have this natural desire to make other people laugh and to really bring joy into other people's lives. These are the kind of people that you meet and hardly forget. They really take a lot of pride in the work they accomplish and how they are perceived in the public eye. The Leo Midhaven person may appear to be very big, loud, and bright and in search of an audience to perform for. But those that know you intimately see that as a fun-loving mask, knowing that at your core you are more of a loner or an introvert because of your Aquarius IC. Really, at the end of the day, you really appreciate your solitude and your space. These people often measure success through the attention they receive. They really want to be seen and worshipped. Because of your open-minded ways and how you grew up, you guys are really accepting and non-judgmental toward how other people show up in their full uniqueness in this world. Typically these are going to be your people that are really natural in the spotlight. These people are highly sensitive and may put you in your place if they feel their ego has been attacked. These people want to do really beautiful things for humanity and they really want to empower others. Some jobs that go well for a Leo Midhaven are of course the performing arts, they are natural speakers, authors, singers, dancers, comedians, um, a lot of Leo Midhavens are on YouTube and these people make excellent politicians. I find the Leo Midhaven person to be pretty present on social media and just to make a quick note here, if you have a Scorpio rising there may be less of a tendency to want to be in the spotlight, yet to still come across powerful in the eyes of others. Alright, so one more thing I want to mention, Leo Midhavens, is that it's really important to take a look at your Midhaven planetary ruler. So taking a look at where the sun is placed in your chart and what house it falls in, as that will give greater indication and greater insight to your unique gifts and how you can contribute to your to your success all right leo midhaven that is all i have for you guys i hope you guys enjoyed and that it resonated with you if you guys are interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one, i do offer birth chart analysis if you want to dive deeper into your chart and i'll leave my website below and you can find everything through my website all right guys take care Well, you know, Elvis was a perfectionist in everything he did. I mean, even in the Army, he worked hard, he was proud of things, he cared about things. I see you guys in this world as the healers of the Midhavens. I think you guys are naturally inclined toward really serving others. So before we talk about the Virgo Midhaven, I always like to talk about the IC as I find that to be important in looking at your roots and your foundation as I feel that has important insight to how you show up in your world growing into your Virgo Midhaven. Growing up with a Pisces IC, I find these children to be really kind and compassionate and gentle, having really, you know, sensitive hearts and they're so kind that they may easily get taken advantage of. I find that these children usually grow up in very spiritual or religious households. One way in which the Pisces is described is by living their life through rose-colored glasses. And so when you grow up with a Pisces IC, there's almost the sense that you're wearing these rose-colored glasses and you're not, necessar not necessarily seeing things clearly for what they are. 
I find that the children tend to be really creative and artistic and very talented. It almost feels like they carry in this talent from a past life. There is a tendency with this IC to have a parent that may have been manipulative. Um, maybe they were toxic or later absent from your life. It's possible with this IC that you would have grown up in a home that had a lot of confusion or delusion. There may have been a lot of secrets or even things you may have been oblivious to until you get older and then these things start to surface. But for these, some of these children, they don't they can pick up on the vibe that something may be off, but they may not be able to pinpoint what's going on in the family until they get older and, you know, start uncovering the family secrets, something that may really throw you off because you don't understand how you couldn't have realized this growing up. And so I've studied some Pisces I see children that have expressed their childhood to be very dreamlike and ethereal and magical and fun and creative and free. And then I find some of the Pisces I see children to have said it was very lonely and it was very, they were very sensitive to everything around them. And if there was violence in their home, that was something that they took to heart very deeply. And I do find this to be a placement that is possible to have a delusional mother, um, possibly a lack of boundaries with family members or a toxic relationship with one of your parents but possibly not realizing this until you're older. And if the home life felt too chaotic or too sensitive, I find that Pisces IC children really escape through music and through creativity, through art, and um, through the television. And I find that this placement usually comes in with really apparent past life talent. I find this to be a placement where you may have had a closer relationship with a grandparent. I find these children to really connect deeply with animals. So with the experiences that you have as a Pisces IC, for some this may be a bit confusing, for others it may be very inspiring. This is what encourages you to shoot up your tree and really grow into your Virgo midhaven. I really find that these people are committed to service to others and really find a sense of fulfillment through healing others and through guiding others and I find that, you know, with the Earth signs, Virgo, Taurus, and Capricorn, they're all going to have a very similar outlook when it comes to hard work and how they show up in the workplace. And so Virgo Midhaven individuals are extremely hard workers, and this is a Midhaven where once they really find their dream job or that career that really sparks their passion, they will really strive for perfection. and they will really go above and beyond to create something exactly as they imagine it. And there's some would see this as a blessing and some would see it as a curse because they are very perfectionist with their work, but they really try to bring to life what they have in their imagination. And so this can be like really extraordinary work and this can be really soul touching. It's this Piscean depth. It's this depth that, you know, can really take you to another realm. It can really... Um, you know, have you really in touch with your heart and with your soul and with the magnificence of what we're here to experience. They want to be recognized for their self-sacrificial and humanitarian efforts. And because of this deep perfection, many people with this midhaven are seen as the pinnacle of their craft. Bringing the spiritual to the physical, these people can be workaholics and very critical of themselves and they could be really sensitive to criticism for others about the work that they've done. These people are problem solvers, they are editors, they are the healers, they are into holistic health and nutrition. I find the Virgo Midhaven to be very well respected in the workplace. I find this to be the person that people go to when they need advice and I find this to be the person that people really deeply trust and these people make amazing healers they're really you know hands-on whether that be through massage therapy or reiki even holistic health these can be herbalist these can be these people make amazing chiropractors and acupuncturists like your spiritual kind of guru people and these people can be into the occult and kind of bring that into their workplace these people make really great counselors and really good, you know, writers and editors. These people are the kind of people that 
when they're writing, they will triple check their work to make sure that, you know, it's grammatically correct and that everything looks perfect. And these people really prefer to have a workplace that is very serene and very calm, probably surrounded by a lot of plants. So in the workplace, these people can come off as, you know, pretty quiet and to themselves and, uh, you know, humble and innocent and more feminine. These people have really strong mental capabilities and really appreciate precision. These people are hyper aware of themselves in public to the point where they may deal with some social anxiety. They can overthink how they're coming across to others or in the public eye. These people online can come across as perfectionist. These are your people that are going to overthink what they're posting to the point where they probably won't post often. They are very into the detail and very into the editing and they're actually amazing writers. These people are very into alternative medicine and mental health. These people make really great psychologists. And these can be yoga teachers, writers, assistants, event coordinators. These are going to be your quick learners and will question anything that doesn't feel right. Um, as far as being in the public eye, these people prefer to kind of be working behind the scenes. It's also really important to take a look at your planetary ruler of your midhaven and that can give you deeper insight to your unique gifts and what may help you to succeed in the outside world and in your career. Alright Virgo Midhaven, that is all I have for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it resonated with you. If you guys are interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, I will leave my website below and you guys can find all the information on my website. Alright guys, that is it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I hope that you guys learned something new today. Part 2 of the Midhaven series will be coming out soon, so be on the lookout for that. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Until then, take care.